Welcome to Leading the Way, a video series about addressing challenges in biomarker testing. Today, you will hear important insights about biomarker testing standardization in advanced ovarian cancer from Dana Clark, a genetic counselor at a major academic institution. Hi, I'm Dana Clark, a genetic counselor and testing advocate at a large academic institution. As a genetic counselor, I primarily see breast and ovarian cancer patients for hereditary cancer risk evaluations and assessments. My responsibilities include coordinating biomarker testing, sharing results with the team, and counseling patients. I have helped lead the charge on several biomarker testing improvement projects at my institution. Our motivation to improve biomarker testing was peaked after we assessed a sampling of our patients. We found that our ovarian cancer testing rates for germline BRCA1 and 2, more formally known as breast cancer susceptibility gene 1 and 2, were about 25 to 30 percent of testing guideline eligible patients when the goal was to test all eligible patients. This motivated our team to change our process. We knew we were very far from our goal, and we had a lot of work to do to get back on track. Today, I will share our journey with you. In this series, I share strategies that my team and I used to standardize testing for homologous recombination deficiency, or HRD, in patients with advanced ovarian cancer. First, let's discuss how our pilot efforts helped to guide our approach to standardization. We wanted to test all eligible patients, but the work needed to do that seemed unmanageable given our level of available resources. By starting with small projects, we were able to break this task down into pilot efforts so that it felt more manageable. We presented our ideas at a multidisciplinary clinic where we hashed out concerns. This helped to get the team on board. The first project involved incorporating a best practice alert in the electronic medical record or EMR. This didn't work because the pop-up could be cleared even if the provider didn't write the referral. Next, we tried embedding genetic counselors within the infusion clinic. We visited patients on site. However, this was not an efficient use of the genetic counselor's time. Patient availability during treatment was limited, and we found that scheduled visits would have been more effective. Finally, we developed a system where automatic referrals to the genetic counselors were generated after patients had been seen by their gynecologic oncologists. However, documents needed for the referrals could be misplaced, sometimes for months. Although the pilot approaches didn't work as we intended, we did learn a few things. First, small efforts made it easier to get started with process improvement. We were motivated to improve our testing rates and starting small helped us build momentum. While these pilot approaches didn't improve our rates, they did help us to clarify what was and wasn't working. And they also helped us to come to the realization that a more ambitious approach was necessary. So don't be afraid of failure. There is always something to learn from failure. It is better to fail small than to fail big. Second, these projects provided the experiences we needed to develop effective solutions for our institution. To move forward, we learned that we needed to coordinate our efforts with the gynecologic oncologists. Understanding their workflow and collaborating with them proved to be key to more successful initiatives. To hear more about approaches to testing standardization, please click the link below.